military men are just dumb stupid animals to be used only as pawns in foreign policy professor dr henry alfred kissinger welcome to the second part of the video we were talking about the attack on the uss liberty by israel and if you did not get a chance to view the first video its link is in the description of this video it has been confirmed that the mission was to sink the ship we shall get to the reasons in a bit but the attempting to sink the liberty has been documented in various sources like the baltimore sun and the chicago tribune by pulitzer prize winner john crutzen in 2007 Cruzen quoted Steve Fozlund, an intelligence analyst for the 544th Air Reconnaissance Technical Wing, the then highest level strategic planning office in the Air Force. Quote, the ground control station ordered the aircrafts to attack and sink the target and ensure that they left no survivors. Bryce Lockwood, a recipient of the Silver Star for Heroism and an ordained Baptist minister, maintains that the only reason the Israeli armed forces were not able to sink the Liberty was the running out of ammunition. Bryce Lockwood was a Marine Staff Sergeant and a Russian language expert trying to intercept the Russian communications from the Russian allied Arabs. Donald W. Pagler has repeatedly explained the same narrative in various appearances regarding the Liberty. He was a crypto technician on board the Liberty and had gone through 3 years of PTSD therapy in the 1980s due to survivor's guilt. Now that we have presented both sides of the story, we know that the USS Liberty could not have been mistaken for any other ship in the area like the Egyptian Al-Qasir. As number 1, that was a World War 1 horse carrier. Number 2, Egyptian ships are painted black with gray markings. Number 3 Egyptian ships have Arabic script on them instead of English markings and so on and on and on Let us then come to the reasons for the attack There have been a number of reasons speculated for this attack from Israel trying to pull America in the war to trying to hide the atrocities Israel committed during that war There have been at least more than a couple of reasons quoted by the people who were involved directly or indirectly in the incident to be the main reason for the attack in our analysis about the plan to blame the attack on Syria or Egypt and involve US in the war well there was no need for that as Israel had already almost won the war one premise is that Israel had committed grave war crimes and the liberty had recorded those activities But after all our research we did not find any evidence of any killing raping or looting of innocent men women or children by the Israeli armed forces but under the Geneva conventions prisoners of war have to be taken care of in a proper manner Israel had captured about 8 to 900 Egyptian soldiers at Al Arish and brutally murdered them because they needed their troops to attack the Golan Heights a rocky plateau of huge political and strategic importance in southern Syria. They could not dedicate those men to handle the Egyptian soldiers who had surrendered and so kill them all. America had an agreement with Israel that she would not attack the Golan Heights as it had Soviet troops on it and doing so would escalate the war to a full-scale war with the USSR. And then America would have to be sucked into another gruesome war just to defend Israel. America could not afford adding one more war alongside the Vietnam War and that too against one of the mightiest armies history has ever known. However, the Israelis desperately wanted the Golan Heights and hence needed to eliminate the liberty when they decided to attack it. So, they tried to do just that. Eventually Israel did attack the Golan Heights and it took over a considerable portion of it with the help of America but that caused severe diplomatic problems around the world not only for Israel but for America as well but if reports from all the various sources cannot pinpoint as a fact that this is the reasons the Israeli did it then where do we stand on establishing the reason 
as it was only the government of Israel which could have cleared it up, which they never did. Maybe it was some rogue element of the Israeli army that orchestrated this entire event. Ray McGovern is a former CIA analyst who has served under seven presidents at one of the top positions in the US intelligence community for about three decades. He is of the view that Lyndon Johnson knew about the attack when it started not only because American intelligence was good enough to know of the attack but also how Lyndon Johnson reacted after the distress call had been received. This view is supported by the Liberty survivors because they say that they had not identified the attackers by the time the American jets were ordered to return to the carriers by Defense Secretary McNamara. So, how did he know that it was the Navy and Army of Israel that was attacking them? Ray claims Johnson himself ordered the recalling of the American fighter jets saying that I do not want to embarrass an ally. It is obvious that had the US jets reached the Liberty that day, history would not have been as kind to Johnson or Israel as it has been till today. According to Ray, and many other defense analysts. The reason for Johnson to do that was that he wanted to further the Israeli narrative of the Arabs being the aggressors not only against Israel but against America as well. And the only reason Liberty was not sunk that day was the receiving of that distress call. We all know how Johnson came into power. It was like being transferred the lottery amount after the original lottery winner dies. Of course, he was going to be the most pro-Israeli president in the history of the US. We are benefiting from one thing, and that is the attacks on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon and the American struggle in Iraq. These events swung American public opinion in our favor. Benjamin Netanyahu Immediately after this incident, there was a massive cover-up where Johnson tried to conjure up impunity for himself by briefing the Newsweek magazine that the Israelis attacked the Liberty due to their knowledge of it intercepting Egyptian as well as their communications. It got leaked that Johnson himself briefed Newsweek that the attack was done by Israel. Then, the Jewish lobby for informing the American public about the act planned to accuse Johnson of blood libel, and that would dry up his re-election campaign funds from the Jews. Thomas L. Hughes, the director of State Department's Bureau of Intelligence and Research in 67, have publicly explained how the Israelis started blackmailing Lyndon B. Johnson after which they had the heads of the Jewish organizations soften their approach to the Vietnam War and provided intelligence on the Russian surface-to-air missiles that the North Vietnamese were using against American fighter airplanes. In exchange, Johnson crushed the Defense Department's inquiry of the Liberty attack. You can easily find Admiral Bobby Ray Inman's detailed account of it on the internet. The only good thing of this entire episode of Misery was the intriguing way how Liberty managed to avoid sinking. Sometimes blessings do come in disguise. And of course, fortune does favor the brave. The Israelis were jamming all the working frequencies of the Liberty, but not the ones that were not operational. What happened was that one whip antenna had not worked right from the start when the Liberty had started its journey, so much so that it did not even have a wire strung to it. A radio man by the name of Terry Helbardier took a reel of coax cable from the deck and strung that line to that antenna, connecting it with one of their transmitters. When they sent that signal, the Israelis picked it up as well and knew when the US jets had airborne. That is what stopped the attack. Now, call it the acne of God in mysterious ways, or just pure coincidence. But destiny had better for the liberty 
than what Israel had planned. Terry received the Silver Star for his display of exceptional valor and bravery, without which no one knows what sort of a world we would have been living in now. It goes on to show that God does not need armies of men to bring about a positive change. The sacrifice and hard work of even a single man matters and can make the difference between a good and a bad outcome. Everyone can be a hero in their own capacity. You just need the will. All in all, the attack on USS Liberty was one of the saddest part of US history and of military history overall, where it went on to show that military men just follow orders without zero consideration to what that actually means or what their actions would lead to. Donald W. Pagler never let anyone know for more than two decades about the medals of honors he received for being attacked by their closest allies. Others also rejected the honors they were given, saying that they did not need worthless pieces of metal for the agony that they went through and instead needed justice. How did Israel have the courage or the audacity to destroy lives of so many people? Why did the US government sell out their own people? If the Israelis knew about the Russian anti-aircraft missiles, why did they not help America earlier? It is all dirty politics. Lyndon Baines Johnson knew that out of the 270 electoral votes, 169 were in direct control of Israel and he did not want to lose them. Is it a flaw in democracy, of which America claims to be the torchbearer around the world? Or is it due to capitalism that one is willing to do anything for some extra bucks, no matter at what level of opulence they already are? You decide. But especially for the soldiers around the globe, we say this. Do not just follow orders. Do not fight a rich man's war. Do not fight. Until the next time, this was your host, MHB. Every gun that is made, every warship launched, every rocket fired, signifies in the final sense, a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not clothed. This world in arms is not spending money alone. It is spending the sweat of its laborers, the genius of its scientists, and the hopes of its children. This is not a way of life at all, in any true sense. And at the clouds of war, it is humanity hanging on a cross of iron. General Dwight David Eisenhower